We are already past three o'clock, so let me get started. Uh, my name is uh, Takayama with the Graduate School of Education of University of Kyoto. Uh, this lecture series, History of Transnational Development of Japanese Model of Education, has only three more lectures to go, including this one is going to end in March. Uh, after April, a global education office has a new plan. So I would like to continue to have your kind support and cooperation this year. Last month, Professor Kathleen Lewis of Mills College in the city of Oakland in the United States delivered a lecture on lesson study, which is implemented in urban communities with high racial minority uh, population ratio in San Francisco and Chicago. As one of the ongoing transnational development of Japanese educational practice, in the remaining three lectures, including today's one, we are going to focus on the ongoing examples of transnational development of Japanese practices. Last year, we more or less attended to focus on past examples, but this year, based upon the lessons learned from the past examples, we hope that we discuss international development of Japanese educational practices and its future perspectives. In the last five to ten years, educational practices and institutions in Japan, such as, for instance, Kosen, Undokai, and Kominkan, have been. Uh, excuse me, I couldn't share my uh, video, but please allow me to continue. So, such examples like Ko Kosen, Undokai, and Kominkan have exported to other countries. Uh, Kosen has been introduced in Mongolia and Vietnam from 2010 upon their request, and Undokai is practiced in India and South Arabian schools through a Japanese organization with the support of Japanese Ministry of Education. And Kominkan uh, is uh, being uh, implemented around the world as a community learning centers uh, through UNESCO in cooperation with the Ministry of Education as part of ESD. So uh, those uh, Japanese practices have been uh, disseminated to other countries actively, and they also receive a high level of interest from other countries today. And the theme for today is uh, Tokubetsu Katsudo, special activities or Tokkatsu in short. And this uh, practice is one of those ongoing activities. Tokkatsu uh, is gaining international currency as a Japanese word. But what does this imply for us? Some say that Japanese educational practices and institutions like Tokkatsu can flourish only within the cultural and institutional context of the country of its origin. In that sense, transplanting such practices and institutions to other countries may not work or may get distorted. Professor Kathleen Lewis, December last year, actually mentioned that many of the lesson study initiatives in the United States failed. And one reason is that it's not easy to practice such practice like lesson studies in places where Japanese cultural and institutional foundation doesn't exist. She also said that American teachers are not used to critically reviewing each other's teaching practice. And she therefore mentioned that it is very important that explicit instructions had to be given to teachers so that they can ask among each other right questions for constructive dialogue among them. Japanese teachers have been more or less doing rather naturally a essential aspect of lesson study uh, through a practical teaching know-how. And there are some tacit cultural preconditions that support a practice of lesson study, and Japanese teachers are trained to do such a practice 
is through a daily process of socialization. And this may also mean that when educational practices and institutions in Japan are introduced to other countries, we then begin to see the preconditions that have been taken for granted in Japan become clearly aware of them and deepen self-understanding. However, there is a danger that if we emphasize too much the importance of cultural and institutional preconditions when a educational practice is to be introduced into other countries. Otherwise, if we do this, we may simply conclude that such a practice can never succeed uh, in other countries. This is a rather deterministic point of view. True that it is important to understand the systems and foundation which allow the implementation of a certain practice and system or institutions. But at the same time, such a practice or institutions may change according to the local context and may be recontextualized. Then they might become somewhat different from the original ones, but they may also produce a good outcome as a possibility. In fact, lesson studies introduced in the United States are somewhat different from the lesson studies done in Japan, as we learn from Professor Lewis' discussion. Overseas development of educational practice to institutions from another country cannot avoid certain uncertainties. So we must see to what extent such uncertainties are accepted and whether we can see positive potential in such uncertainties. Now, the topic for today's lecture is special activities, or tokatsu in short. I think it was in 2017 that the mass media of Japan extensively covered the practice of tokatsu in Egyptian schools. Children there were cleaning classrooms as we saw in TV programs. And a professor Sugita of Kakugaku University, who was deeply involved in the implementation of Tokatsu in Egypt, is going to lecture us next month. And a professor Ryoko Tsuneyoshi, today's lecturer, on the other hand, is deeply involved in the spread of Tokatsu in Southeast Asian countries, such as Malaysia and in Indonesia. For Egyptian project, it was done as a JICA project with the heavy involvement of Japanese and Egyptian governments. On the other hand, uh, the uh, projects in Malaysia and in Indonesia, where Professor Tsuneyoshi played a very important role, is a case when Tokatsu is spreading on a grassroots level. What are the cultural and institutions as preconditions which allow uh, the implementation of tokatsu in Japan, and when those preconditions are lacking in other countries such as Southeast Asia, is it possible to have a functional tokatsu? What was necessary to make it happen? And in the process of imp implementation, did tokatsu change and was reborn? in other contexts. Those are uh, the points of interest. I'm looking forward to hear uh, from Professor Tsuneyoshi. Uh, professor Tsuneyoshi is a professor of Graduate School of Education in the University of, of Tokyo, and he has authored many books and uh, papers on comparative education research on Japan and United States, and minority education in Japan and the Japanese-style schooling. In 1992, she authored a book, Ningen Keisei no Nichibe Hikaku, Kakureta Curriculum. It's so famous as a textbook for comparative international education and comparative cultural uh, studies. Uh, and 
uh, she also has many textbooks which are essential for the study of Japanese education in English-speaking countries. Especially noteworthy is Japanese model of schooling comparisons with the United States in 2001, minorities and education in multicultural Japan, and uh, globalization of Japanese ex exceptionalism in education, insiders' views into a changing system from Routledge. And more recently, uh, she published the book, uh, Tokatsu, the Japanese educational model of holistic education uh, for the English-speaking readers. She also kicked off Tokatsu project, a research group for global educators, and she has been promoting very much the Tokatsu implementation in Indonesia and Malaysia. She's going to speak under the theme of internationalization of Japanese school style of schooling, Tokatsu. Now I give you Professor Snayoshi. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, I'm very happy to hear that uh, Professor Catherine Lewis spoke before me. Her name is mentioned in uh, my PowerPoint later on. Um, and now before I talk about um, the Japanese style of education, uh, especially tokatsu and uh, somewhat lesson study, um, I would like to first review um, some um, uh, points of discussion in um, educational transfer or educational borrowing. Um, as was uh, mentioned in the introduction, um, educational transfer and educational borrowing um, are areas uh, which are established in uh, comparative education uh, both have um, a long history uh, within the field uh, and many studies um, have referred to the difficulty uh, of moving um, one national model uh, which is uh, which is embedded uh, in the cultural and social context of a certain country uh, to another uh, country uh, which has a different mixture of cultural and social uh, economic and political um, factors. However, um, having said that, uh, as I have in my PowerPoint, Whatever research says, uh, educational transfer and educational uh, borrowing has always been practiced uh, regardless. And um, of course, uh, one of the uh, one example um, where um, educational transfer, if you can call it that, educational transfer. Uh, has a very forced kind of um, uh, nature is is in the case of colonization. Uh, the educational model uh, of the colonizing uh, uh, country uh, is transferred to the uh, colonized. Um, and uh, then there are more semi-voluntary um, transfers or borrowing, uh, as well as uh, more voluntary, uh, depending on uh, the degree um, of how voluntary it is. Um, and uh, very often, uh, in even in the case of voluntary transfer or voluntary borrowing, um, countries uh, which uh, are more powerful in the uh, the international arena, uh, military, economic, political, whatever, uh, and which are seen as more advanced uh, in certain ways, uh, have been the model for other countries. Uh, and I think today, um, or in this series, uh, when we are talking about national models, and in this case, the Japanese uh, style model, um, this uh, mechanism of power uh, relationships uh, does come into play. Um, 
in the in the contemporary era in our our era uh, of uh, globalization, um, there is a twist uh, to this uh, um, voluntary uh, educational transfer, uh, and that involves um, uh, new technologies of like the internet, uh, which make borrowing easier. Uh, and also, uh, which make travel easier. Um, and we also see in our globalized era, uh, the rise of, uh, the private sector, uh, uh, an increasing role of the private sector in educational transfer, um, which has, uh, sometimes become very, a very globalized, uh, industry, education industry. Now, when we talk about um, educational, um, the transfer of educational models in our global era, era um, there are um, educational models um, from uh, OECD and United Nations and uh, and others, which are transnational from the beginning. Uh, and various countries will adopt that. Um, and then uh, there are national models that go global. Uh, and uh, this is probably the, um, the focus of uh, the, the, the series. Um, but countries can adopt uh, transnational models and national models of some country at the same time. Now, when you are talking about um, borrowing models from another country, borrowing national models uh, from another country, um, the situation in um, in higher education and uh, education in secondary school and uh, below it are different. Um, in uh, the higher education level, um, the United States, UK, and other English-speaking countries uh, tend to be on the top of the list. Um, these are countries which have uh, received uh, um, a lot of uh, international students for a long time, and uh, there are businesses um, associated with um, bringing uh, students to these countries. Um, now, when you look at secondary school and below that, uh, and the international achievement tests uh, that are used uh, to justify borrowing models uh, at this level, um, you see a different picture. Um, now, East Asian countries uh, such as um, certain uh, cities in uh, China or um, or Korea itself, or Japan, uh, as well as Singapore, uh, are tend to be these and other uh, East Asian regions uh, and countries uh, tend to be on the top of the the list. Um, and uh, the um, the Japanese model of education uh, would probably fall into uh, this category. Um, now, uh, in general, um, Asian models or non-Western models are uh, rare uh, compared to Western industrialized country models uh, in the international arena. Um, how, however, today uh, there are um, school models uh, from Singapore, uh, for example, which are used uh, beyond uh, Singapore. And um, lesson study in Tokatsu, which uh, originate from Japan, are also such um, national models which have 
uh, become international. Um, again, you can see uh, the um, major role that international tests or international rankings are playing uh, in, uh, in the uh, international or global uh, context uh, of um, educational borrowing uh, in our, um, our present era. Now what, um, I have often been asked to talk about um, the Japanese style of education uh, in workshops abroad, but uh, the presentations are mostly in English uh, because of the nature of the audience I am talking to. Um, but this is uh, this slide was taken from uh, one of the rare uh, occasions in which I talked in Japanese. Uh, and as you can see, it's in 2015 uh, when uh, the Tokatsu model uh, only started to emerge, um, uh, at least uh, on an international level. And uh, then uh, I talked about, uh, hypothetically, um, some of the uh, common characteristics uh, or mechanisms um, of uh, tokatsu and lesson study, um, which um, help them uh, become uh, transnational models. And um, of course, uh, lesson study had been uh, has a lot had a longer history uh, than tokatsu, and it was already uh, an international model by this time. Um, I still think that uh, the um, things I said uh, uh, in this presentation are um, pretty much relevant today. So I'm going to introduce um, uh, the discussion, um, which I made then. Um, uh, first of all, I identified, you know, certain um, factors which seem to facilitate um, the uh, transfer of or internationalization of uh, lesson study. Uh, and tokatsu, uh, which was emerging at that time. Um, uh, international need, uh, meaning that uh, what the model uh, targeted, um, for example, social and emotional uh, aspects and etc. Et for tokatsu was something that the international um, community uh, valued at that time or started to value at that time. Uh, and then the advantage is that uh, the, uh, that aspect uh, was something that uh, was seen as, um, was something that Japan was seen to have uh, an advantage in uh, compared to the existing uh, educational models in the international arena. Um, and then uh, alternative uh, is that uh, very often the dominant models uh, in, in the international community are, are Western models, are, are from Western societies. Uh, and uh, both lesson study and tokatsu are seen as targeting uh, areas of education which uh, the Western models have uh, not addressed as much as other areas. And uh, so in this case, um, Japan is seen as a possible alternative model uh, or uh, a stronger model in those areas. Uh, and then uh, the fourth uh, is accessibility. Um, lesson, both lesson study and tokatsu have a long tradition within Japan. Um, however, uh, Japanese is not used internationally. So um, as long as everything that is discussed about those two are in Japanese, uh, the model does not become international. It is when uh, 
it is uh, when um, the information on uh, lesson study or uh, tokatsu um, was translated or uh, made in English or in another language that is used abroad, uh, it, that is when um, the, the uh, Japanese style model uh, is recognized as something, you know, that exists abroad uh, and then is available to the international community. Now here is a slide that I took from um, the presentation I just mentioned in 2015 and I give uh, the example of lesson study according to the four categories. Um, what is the international need uh, or what was the international need for lesson study? Um, there was uh, a rise uh, in interest for uh, internationally for bottom-up teacher-led teacher training and learning uh, and um, certain views of uh, teachers and children that lesson study supported such as teachers as professionals who were responsible for um, making you know changes to their teaching uh, uh, as professionals uh, and certain views of understanding children which was um, child-based and collaborative rather than competitive um, and then um, uh, Japan was seen to have an advantage in such collaborative uh, bottom-up teacher learning uh, and uh, of course you know that it has a different and uh, and a long hi a history of such uh, teacher learning uh, methods uh, compared to the existing uh, international models at that time uh, and of course uh, today as well but um, and then uh, because of this uh, the lesson study model uh, was seen as uh, providing uh, an, an alternative to the um, dominant models um, that uh, were available in the international arena at that time. Um, and then of course uh, there was the uh, the fact that the information became available in English uh, at that time. Here I um, introduce an example of accessibility of lesson study um, using um, uh, taking the home page of um, the group headed by um, Professor Catherine Lewis. Um, it shows what is the uh, definition, their definition of lesson study, and I have the uh, translation in Japanese on the left. Here I introduce the example of tokatsu. Um, in relation to the um, the international need and other categories that I talked about uh, in relation to lesson study before this. And uh, here I, I mentioned that um, at the time that tokatsu emerged uh, as uh, a possible international model uh, or internationalized model, um, there was a re-evaluation of social and emotional learning and other non-cognitive learning um, and uh, in the international arena. Okay, And uh, in Japan, the, the Tokatsu model uh, tries to um, integrate and uh, in an interactive way uh, non-cognitive learning and cognitive learning uh, subjects as well as those learning opportunities which are not 
subjects within the official curriculum. Um, I also add that uh, today we see uh, in both transnational models and uh, national models, the rise in interest in educating uh, the total child or the whole child or the holistic, uh, holistically um, uh, for the, uh, the 21st century. And this involves both cognitive and non-cognitive uh, learning. Today, societies often agree uh, on a, a certain abstract, uh, abstract level about um, the types of uh, skills, abilities, competencies uh, that um, students need uh, to acquire in our era of um, globalization and um, diversification. Um, therefore, uh, Countries around the world, uh, when they talk about educational reform, uh, are talking about um, uh, the need for uh, students to be able to um, participate in, in uh, communication uh, with uh, people from different backgrounds, uh, collaborate, um, innovate. Uh, these are all uh, rhetoric that you find uh, in um, reform proposals around the globe. Um, this is where the uh, the Japanese Tokatsu model comes in. Um, since internationally there has been a revival in the interest in uh, social and emotional, uh, non-cognitive aspects uh, of uh, the child. Uh, and um, uh, the holistic nature of uh, the Japanese style of education had been um, discussed before by people like Catherine Lewis, um, Educating Hearts and Minds. Uh, I also wrote something. Uh, so that was in the 90s to early 2000s. And, um, but uh, for a long time, um, the, the uh, non-cognitive and social and emotional um, were, n were, not the, uh, were not central kind of um, interests of uh, policymakers and um, uh, educational reform uh, proposals. And, um, but as there was growing... Um, uh, interest in uh, such areas uh, and in developing the total child, the whole child, and uh, holistic, holistic in the development. Um, the uh, Japanese model, uh, since it, it is a uh, model that brings in both the cognitive and non-cognitive, uh, and tries to integrate it in in the official curriculum. Uh, it th this aspect became uh, an advantage uh, in the alternative uh, in the uh, international context. Uh, and then there was the uh, issue of accessibility. And again, uh, uh, this is where. Um, I was also involved in this, and uh, where uh, information on tokatsu started to come out uh, in English. Uh, and then, uh, since around the 1950, 1915, sorry, uh, the um, JICA has assisted uh, tokatsu efforts uh, in Egypt. Um, here's some uh, information of the um, the JICA efforts in Egypt uh, relating to tokatsu, uh, which are available in English. This is an example of some of the uh, media reports that came out um, about uh, the efforts of um, JICA and uh, the Japanese um, assistance to Egypt. Um, 
information on the Tokats model, however, uh, is lacking uh, in any other language than Japanese. Um, therefore, um, I helped um, create, um, for example, the homepage there in several languages uh, and um, uh, had uh, a report of uh, from a research group in in Japan on tokatsu translated and things like that. Um, uh, but uh, to this day, the uh, there is still a lack of information uh, in English uh, in other languages, uh, um, and uh, there is a need to to provide more information. Uh, so that there can be uh, a discussion um, uh, uh, about, you know, um, a balanced uh, development of children and to uh, holistic education in general, uh, and the uh, Japanese version of it. Uh, and these, I think, discussions uh, help uh, educators, policymakers, uh, in, in around the globe and, uh, and it will also help, uh, uh, Japanese educators as well as they try to, uh, to meet the ne new needs and, uh, and to, um, improve, uh, their, uh, practices of, um, of holistic, uh, education. Um, and, uh, one of the things that happened, I think, with uh, the initial um, in internationalization of the Tokas model was that some parts of it were uh, easier to um, uh, to emulate uh, than others. Uh, because, uh, for example, the act of cleaning or the act of serving lunch, uh, these were visual images that that uh, could be uh, emulated easily. Um, however, uh, the logic behind it uh, and the link with, um, for example, uh, classroom discussion or the subjects um, were things that were less obvious. Um, therefore, uh, it is necessary to provide uh, information on the less obvious uh, for any kind of uh, model that is internationalizing. Here I uh, introduce an example um, from Indonesia um, from uh, the homepage of the Center for Advanced School Education and Evidence-Based Research at the University of Tokyo um, Graduate School of Education. Um, here I am introducing um, an example from an elementary school in Kumamoto City, uh, which has used um, online techniques uh, to advance tokatsu. Um, Japan uh, was allowed as uh, to uh, develop uh, its uh, relatively uh, distinct models. Um, therefore, um, today when you look at uh, the Japanese style models of education, um, some of them are uh, considered as uh, progressive, uh, uh, pioneering uh, in a way, uh, because they fit a new uh, need of the international uh, of many societies uh, an international trend um, and others would be considered uh, uh, something that has to be overcome uh, so uh, it is this combination of both uh, which um, uh, characterizes a uh, a model um, which is uh, often uh, very different from the dominant international model, uh, which is often based on a uh, on a Western uh, uh, concept of of uh, of um, 
human development and, and education. I end my um, presentation by noting that um, the need for non-cognitive and cognitive uh, uh, learning uh, combined, uh, as well as holistic education, uh, are are not confined to a single uh, society, um, and therefore, um, even it, when we start with a national model like the Japanese style model of education, uh, we can work toward a transnational model, um, bringing together the resources of uh, various societies and. Uh, which may address a similar uh, concern or similar uh, theme of of um, of uh, educating uh, the total child. Thank you very much.